got some funny theft stories for you today on this uh, story time drive. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, I, I've been just for some reason I, you know, you remember weird things throughout your life, throughout your career, and uh, I just wanted to get this out while I was thinking about it. Um, times where uh, or stories I've heard from places I've worked about people stealing stuff. I mean, I'm not talking a pen or, a, you know, some paper or anything like that, but uh, I mean, uh, external people stealing from the company. Uh, so I'll just get right on with the story here. Uh, about 20 years ago, I worked at, at, at a place that um, uh, we worked on gas turbines for power generation. And uh, well, I got one before that, but uh, let me finish this one. So uh, I was talking to the, uh, the production supervisor that worked in my department, and he said, uh, he had a couple of stories. Uh, he said that uh, one night a guy came in, this was before I worked there, and uh, the guy walked in, and this was like 11, 12 o'clock at night, because they ran a third shift, and he said he wanted to borrow their forklift, and the supervisor kind of looked at him and was like, uh, no, <laughs> you can't, you, you, you know, I can't loan you my forklift, I don't even know you, um, you know, and, and, and so no. So the guy left, the guy walked back out, I mean, this was, a, there was no fence uh, at, at this facility yet. The, when I worked there, there was a fence, but um, when this happened, uh, people could just walk into the building, I mean, this was over 20 years ago. Um, so anyway, the night supervisor, you know, kind of watches the guy out the office door and follows him. And uh, <laughs> on the street, so the building is probably about, a, you know, two, three hundred yards back from the street. So he, he watches this guy and uh, he, he sees a, another guy, he, he sees a car in the street. So he gets a little closer and, and, and looks and um, they were in something like a Ford Pinto or something like that little small car and they had a rope tied it was a hatchback tied somewhere to the back of the car and the rope went around this big cylinder uh, I don't you know he said it was probably about three feet tall and, and the thing probably weighed you know like a thousand pounds so he said there was a guy driving the car pulling the rope around this big cylinder and the other guy the guy that came in asking to use the forklift was like pushing, rolling this this cylinder, like the big pipe. You know, it was dark, so he couldn't really tell what it was, but you know, apparently these guys were like scrappers, uh, scrap metal guys, and uh, they, wa they wanted to borrow the forklift so they could lift that big pipe into the back of the car. <laughs> Needless to say, I don't think even if you know, somebody was stupid enough to, to loan him the forklift that uh, that car would have fared very well with that big thousand pound pipe in, in the back. So, <laughs> so that was story number one. Uh, story number two, same night supervisor, he said uh, he, he was making his rounds uh, one night and he heard somebody stirring in the back area where they keep their they're like hold parts or uh, out of tolerance parts and uh, the part was called a transition and if I can find a stock picture of it um, that's you know open source I'll, I'll put the picture in here to show you what a transition looks like it's a, it's it's like a big tube and it's made out of uh, really really high strength super alloy and it weighs about 80 pounds Right? So you got 80 pounds of, of this pipe. Uh, it's got a little neck to it. And uh, so this thing, you know, being made out of super alloy, it, it, it costs quite a bit of money. So anyway, and there's like a six or eight foot fence, I can't remember, and there's uh, barbed wire at, at, at the top of the fence. Well, here's, you know, somebody grunting and groaning and, and metal scooching around on the ground. So he, he kind of looks sticks his head this was in a fenced area outside and on the other side of the fence is just the road so he looks back there and 
the only lights back there are like the street lights. So he looks and he sees this guy, um, probably about maybe five feet tall, but you know, he could tell the outline of this guy's body. He was like a little bodybuilder. And uh, so he yells out, hey, what are you doing? And he sees a guy pick up this 80 pound tube chuck it over the eight or six or eight foot fence i don't care how tall it was but he, he threw it like it was a, a you know a piece of paper and uh and the guy threw it over the fence landed on the other side he scurries up the fence goes over the barbed wire like it was nothing and and runs up and picks up this 80 pound tube on his shoulder and runs off and uh the night supervisor was like i ain't messing with that dude so he just let him go. Called the cops. Hey, you know, there's a little guy like five feet tall, muscular build, and he's carrying an 80 pound tube on, on his shoulder. Oh man. Phew. Strange, strange happenings. All right. Um, next story. Um, I was working uh, at a manufacturer and we had these scrap parts and they are also made out of uh, high strength super alloy but they're little small widgets you know size of the palm of your hand uh, can't weigh more than maybe a pound a couple of pounds a piece and uh, um, all different shapes and sizes but uh, you know about a pound a piece and um, so when they don't meet dimensional requirements or you know they get inspected and they have cracks or whatever um, they they get Put into a scrap bin and basically they're 55 gallon drums and so we had 10 20 drums of these of these uh, parts and this was before I started working there uh, but I you know we still have the drums well apparently um, somebody was uh, before there was more security than there was when I worked there somebody was was assigned to get rid of the scrap right um, to send it to revert what they call revert so you send it to um, like a mill or something place that that makes this raw material and say hey you know this is uh, unusable stuff remelt it and, and sell us good stuff at a discount price or whatever or buy the scrap from us and we'll buy the good stuff from you but anyway um, barrels and barrels of this stuff was just sent out for, for revert well, sometime later, um, there was um, an indication. Somehow they found out that uh, whoever was in charge of, of getting rid of this scrap was, was taking that scrap down to Mexico and selling the actual parts uh, to be used. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, they you know they they did a full investigation and. and narrowed it down to only a few people who had access to that scrap who, who would be taking it off the premises uh, and it, it would turn out to be somebody internally not whoever we were sending the scrap to so uh, yeah that, that was a big big deal so uh, that, that you know I ever seen the posters as I'm the reason for this safety training <laughs> well, that guy was a reason for higher security uh, okay, next story. I was uh, working as a, a, an engineering intern uh, at a company that, that made castings. And <clears throat> um, I think shortly or briefly before I started working there, kind of like the, because uh, I worked there the summer semester of my senior year. This was back in like 1998 or 1999. 1990, party like it's 1999. Um, <clears throat> but anyway. Uh, I was there when the story was the story was circulating around the office that they finally caught whoever was stealing our our um, our billets. Um, it was a casting factory, so we would buy billets of you know raw material, um, nickel, copper, stuff like that that goes into the castings. And um, the the story goes that. Um, the, the scrapyard calls us up and said, hey, um, this guy just showed up and, and sold me some copper. 
and you know, I'm kind of torn about this story, but anyway, the, the, the scrapyard dealer did the right thing, kind of, um, but he bought the scrap, he, he bought the billet, I mean, this was like shiny, big hunk of copper, right, and um, uh, so he, he calls like around the area, he's like, well, the only place that would use this stuff is this factory here. So he calls somebody at the factory, probably called the front desk or something, said, hey, I got this big, you know, these big billets of copper. Uh, I, I think they belong to you. So sure enough, uh, they call the cops, the company calls the cops, or, or they do an inventory. He's like, yep, we're missing some copper, uh, you know, because billets of copper ain't cheap, you know, especially pure copper or the great copper that this stuff was. So they show up with the police, and, uh, and again, I'm kind of torn at the, about this part of the story, but the, uh, <clears throat> the, the management from the company um, checks it over, makes sure it's ours, make, you know, checks the serial numbers and, and stuff on the billet. So, yep, that belongs to us. And, and I, I don't know how the conversation went, but something, it went something like, hey, okay, now you can load it into our trucks. Um, and the guy says, well, it's your stuff, you load it. And uh, so it, it got kind of to a heated conversation, you know, that the scrapyard guy did the right thing and said, hey, you know, he, he called and, and, um, and, and, and uh, reported it, um, you know, a suspicious uh, material. Now, I would have said, you know, I would have thought, no, I ain't dealing with that. I'm not messing with that, you know, and call the cops and not even buy it. So anyway... Um, you know, the conversation was like, well, you're going to load it up on our trucks for us. And the guy's like, that's your stuff. You know, you load it up. And uh, so the management guy says, well, I tell you what, you can load it or I can have these cops arrest you for possession of stolen property, which I thought was a little over the top. Uh, now, again, the story might have been embellished a little bit, but if that's the way it really happened, I, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of, agree with the scrap dealer I mean he did the right thing and he's probably out money that he paid um, the, the, the scrapper to buy it so so he could you know could report it but anyway um, hope you find those stories interesting uh, just weird things I remember in my career so anyway that's all I got catch you guys later Didn't think I'd forget, did you, Mr. Holster? <laughs>